Christ is risen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. I like that too. Glory forever, right? All right. Every time I uh, turn my attention to the encounter between Jesus and Fotini, the Samaritan woman, I am astonished. There is no end to the depth of inspiration in this story. But this morning I'll make just a few remarks, bookended by a couple of startling and beautiful quotes, and hope your imagination might be stirred to consider for yourself the depth of the meaning here. First, there's a chorus by Van Morrison that comes to mind from the song A Sense of Wonder, and I'm not going to sing it, I'm just going to repeat it. It goes like this, didn't I come to bring you a sense of wonder? Didn't I come to lift your fiery vision bright? Didn't I come to bring you a sense of wonder in the flame? What flame? The flame of God's love, of course, that burns away the tragic conditioning of Fotini's life, the flame of understanding, the flame of forgiveness, the flame of divine compassion, the flame of transfiguration that lifts her in this encounter. It is this flame that elevates her and catapults her into that present moment's encounter with living and dynamic truth unbound by past, unbound by sin, unbound by even religion that has no power to constrain it. For there is a time coming, Jesus says, and now is, when the true worshipers will no longer worship on this mountain or in that temple, but in spirit and in truth. And St. Basil, I learned from Bishop John just recently, speaks about this very surprisingly of an auspicious and necessary detachment even from religion itself. And I think that's what we see here. Detachment from religion and attachment to the very thing religion is supposed to point to in the first place, union with God. For religion is at best a finger pointing at the moon and not the moon itself. To mistake the finger for the moon is a common and unfortunate mistake. It is a dead end. Religion is not the end or the goal. It should be a way to the end and to the goal. It is possible, writes Marcus Borg, to be centered in sacred tradition and yet not have one's heart in God. It's interesting that Jesus does not ask Samaritan woman to repent. He does not judge her for her sin. He judges her according to his infinite compassion. She opens to him and he receives her completely. Here's the first startling quote that I love so much from the Australian Catholic priest John Dupush speaking about this gospel. I quote, He, that is Jesus, does not feel compromised at being alone with a woman, a Samaritan, an adulteress, for he is not concerned about clean and unclean. To him all things are pure, for he is pure and makes all things pure. He is whole and makes all things whole. It is the unclean mind that sets up obstacles and divisions between black and white and rich and poor, young and old, male and female, clean and unclean. It is the divided heart that says, you are not my friend. You are not my very own self. It is clear to me that Jesus, the pure one, sees her with his pure eyes and pure heart, as clean and pure, as friend, not foe, as one with him and not the other. This is the quintessential I-thou moment 
that Martin Buber was talking about. The second and final quote is from a poem by the Irish priest John O'Donohue, quite a wonderful poet in the Celtic spiritual tradition. It is a beautiful prayer of hope and blessing that comes to mind when I read this gospel. I think it speaks of the Lord's good intentions and of the goal of spiritual transformation, the very transformation we see occurring today. Listen real carefully. Quote, May you listen to your longing to be free. May the frames of your belonging be generous enough for your dreams. May you rise each day with a voice of blessing whispering in your heart. May you find harmony between your soul and your life. So what do you think? Does this not speak to the longing of every heart? For freedom, for love, for authenticity, for abundance? Is this not the point of our drinking living water and receiving the Eucharist and of worshiping with spirit and truth, the breath and awareness, unbounded, mindful, conscious, and awake. I think it is. And that's what this gospel says to me today. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.